Right, everyone, weapon collector here. Right, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to melt HDPE and various other sort of plastics that are meltable and make handle scales and anything really. You can turn these into slabs of plastic that you can use to make handles and lots of things, catapults, there's no end of things you could use these for. So, what I'm going to be using today is bits of chopped up chopping board you can also use bottle lids and anything that is a certain recyclable if that makes sense so i'll add the numbers for the type of plastic that you can do in the um as a subtitle and now i'll show you exactly what you need to do it so what me and metallic used was one of these little small ovens this is actually her one and then some cooking liner to stop the plastic sticking to the little tray. It works really well. If you've seen any of my previous videos, you'll see where Metallic Reality made some really, really nice looking handle scales for some knives. And it was her who initially showed me how to do this, and she learned it for YouTube. You're also going to need a sort of mould. There's loads of ways you can do this, but the, the mould I made was just from wood and the non-stick cooking uh, liner and some duct tape, and then a piece of wood to push it down. I would recommend having this piece of wood as tight to the hole as you can possibly get it, because if it's not, it sometimes creates a lump, and then that makes things a little bit more difficult. The first thing I would recommend you do, though, if you're going to use stuff like what I'm using, which is old bits of chopping board I've used for various products, you're going to want to clean them, because mine are filthy. So that is what I'll be doing next. I'll be cleaning all of the HDP. And it is just hot water, a scourer, and some washing up liquid or anything will do it. So just give your give your HDP, if it's like mine, a good clean. Bottle lids, clean those. And then we'll come back to the next part. One thing I would say is I became aware while doing this that certain bits of chopping board and HDB are slightly different. Some are a little bit more brittle and some aren't. So if you can work out which one is which, it, it, you can do it by scratching the HDPE. One will feel quite soft, one will feel quite brittle. If you can determine the difference and you have different ones, they will melt at different temperatures as well. So it does help to know that. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take the larger chunks and cut them into smaller bits because they should melt easier then. Another tip that I have for you is if you pay attention to where your oven heats up, you can heat the stuff up better. On the one I've got, there's a vertical sort of line heater. There's a vertical heat thing that goes along. So you want to line up your stuff underneath that rather than crossing it, if that makes sense. And then it should melt a lot more even. Right, so you can see the heat bars there heating up in the little oven. It is set to around about 150 degrees. From what I've read, that is around about right. So for this first project, I'm going to do all white because I want to make some nice white scales. I want to do all white scales for a little knife I'm making or a pair of knives. So... You basically just put your tray in. I've probably got a bit too much here, but it was it was the amount I wanted to melt. Um, and it's a bit of a learning process for me as well. So you put it in, and I check it every 20 minutes, and it will gradually melt. And what you can do is, as it gradually melts, you can take it out, and with some gloves on, you can sort of mix it together a bit. It will be very hot, though, so you do want some kind of actual heat-proof gloves. But we'll come back in a second when it's actually started to melt. So it's been in there for quite a while now, a good 40 minutes, maybe an hour, because um, I did have quite a lot in there. I'm now mixing it together using the non-slip cooking thing to sort of manipulate the HDPE and keep squashing it all together. So mix it. I don't know if this process is essential, but I do it. Um, you mix it together and then I'll put it back in again. Right, so the plastic has been in there for a good hour, an hour and a half maybe, maybe longer. And I've put it in the mould now. I'm just using a bit of non-stick paper to 
to stop the pressure mould thing, you know, the, the thing I'm pushing it down with, to stop it sticking to the plastic. But I'm trying to get it nice and uniform and about as level as I can to make a nice slab. And it dries quite quickly, it, it and it cools quite quickly as well. It'll be hot inside for quite a while, but I did find if you wanted it to cool down quickly, you can take it indoors and run it under a tap. So I now have my roughed out and quite rough looking scale. So I'm now going to take a plane and just turn this into a nice rectangular shape to work with. And it, 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 will, it will file and cut and plane quite well. So I'm just going to plane off any lumps and bumps just to get a nice uniform edge for working with basically. So these are how the scales turned out in the end. I'll show you some pictures as well. And I didn't plan them to be like this. They've come out like marble almost and they look really nice. But that was totally unintentional. Where I was mixing them together, my gloves were a bit dirty. The dirt got onto the HDPE and it's created a marbled effect. And it does look really good. I think you could actually, these do imitate marble really well. But it was totally unintentional. But I like them. And I will use these. You can once you've done them. There's a couple of little imperfections, but you can you can get rid of those. You can once they're done. So you use them as scales, and then go over them with a heat gun afterwards, and it will sort of melt the surface and give it a nice shiny looking surface. So while I was there, I also made a sort of blue multicolored one as well. And again, that came out really nice. And that's a rough edge on it. When when you do a nice, you, know, you sand it and and then go over it with the heat gun, you can get a really nice effect. Yeah, I'm really happy with those, and I definitely want to do more. And as mentioned, you can use chopping boards, you can use bottle lids, and if you use this sort of translucent-ish bottle lids, you can get a really nice effect where you can almost see into the handle scales. It's really nice. Yeah, I'll definitely recommend doing it. It doesn't smell. You don't need to wear a mask or anything. You just really need gloves, the oven, some kind of non-stick material, and you can come up with some really nice handle scales. I'm definitely going to make more, and I can't wait to use these for some kind of knife or whatever I'm going to use them on. Right, so I hope that's helpful. There's a lot more videos out there who will show you how to do this better, but this is just what I did. And... If you, if you have any questions, just ask me. Alright, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it helpful. Don't forget to like, comment, share the video if you like. Definitely subscribe. And I'll see you later. Cheers for watching, everyone.